Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I'm going to walk you guys through a step-by-step -step tutorial of the bench press for beginners. Yes, this is the way I used to do stuff back in the day. People have really liked it when I've covered some of the, these tutorials. Now, I apologize for the audio uh, in this particular room. Yes, I know there's a squirrel making sounds outside that chirp you're hearing is a squirrel. Not much I can do about it. I'm going to let him alone. But... We're going to have some fun with this, and some of this is going to be in good fun, so I don't want anyone to get their feelings hurt, because I'm going to walk you guys through foot positions, hand positions, grip styles, arch, all of that real quickly, uh, and explain how to do this, but I'm going to make fun of noobs up front. I'm going to lay down and demonstrate for you guys how noobs bench press and all the mistakes they make all in one go. I'm going to make as many noob mistakes as possible. I'm gonna make fun of noobs a little bit, but it's okay, guys. It's in your best interest so that you guys see how this stuff looks, and then we're gonna correct all of it. All right, this is how noobs bench press. All right. Okay, that's what it looks like. Now, I over-exaggerated the foot dancing because that's the one thing I will almost slap the shit out of a new lifter for doing. That is my biggest pet peeve, is the foot dancing. So, <laughs> we laid down flat back, no tightness, bounced my feet around, had the wrists all the way back, bench to the upper chest, had excessive flare of the elbows, basically everything <laughs> just about you could possibly do wrong. That is what an untrained bench presser does. So first we need to talk about foot position. If you are set in tight, there is no way your foot can move. And one of the things that I do if I'm teaching someone how to bench press in person, I walk over and kick their leg. If their leg can move or their knee moves, they're not tight enough. So let's discuss the two ways to set up. All right, your options are gonna be flat foot or on your toes. Um, it's personal preference. Some guys are stronger with one and the other, but here's what I'm gonna say. Flat footed, if you're fairly new, you're probably going to be a little more stable, okay? It is legal in all powerlifting federations. Going on your toes is usually for people who want a larger arch. Uh, the IPF bans it, but most powerlifting feds allow it as a meat legal bench. However, if you're not trying to arch a ton and create a big arch in your back, there's no reason to go on your toes, all right? So we set up on the bench, if you're going to go flat-footed, you have a lot of options of standards about like this. Some people put them way up front. Most people don't. That's rare individuals who are built to do that correctly. So usually on the bench, we want to sit down, or as you lay down, and you pull yourself up onto the bar. You want to set your feet in tight. Now look at how my feet are. Okay, I've got my butt on the bench and I'm up in the air. My heels are hard on the floor. Okay, set down. My lower body is set. You can't move that. So there's no way I could foot dance because as I'm doing that, as I'm laying here, I'm doing a leg extension into the floor. And notice there's a leg drive. When I push, notice my body comes up, okay? Our other option is to go on the toes. And when you go on the toes, you usually put your feet behind you. Uh, again, this is used to create a larger arch. So it looks like this. Same thing, notice your feet are dug in hard. Okay, you create a big arch like this. Okay, belly's up in the air. Probably about five inches, six inches between my spine and the bench. Okay, this is to reduce range of motion. So that when you bench that way. All right, unless you're probably gonna be a competitive power lifter or you're chasing the biggest max possible, you probably don't need to do that. Um, and that's okay, it's still personal preference. If you're just training in the gym, it's fine, do whatever you want. Either one is stable if done correctly, it's easier to learn flat-footed. Okay, the other thing we'll notice is how to create the arch flat-footed. Come down on the bench. Watch that I set my feet. Pull myself in, heels are flat, digging into the floor, create an arch. 
Why do we do this? Number one, some people say, oh, you're cheating, it's reducing the range of motion. No, it actually uh, recruits the pectorals more. EMG studies confirm that. It recruits the pectorals more and it's safer on the shoulder joint to have some arch. Again, notice the lack of internal rotation of the shoulder when you do that. Okay, our other option is going to be about grip width. So the question becomes, where do you grip it? Um, if you notice, usually you've got the smooth through here. You've got a ring over here. Now, some bars like mine have two rings. Some bars have a really wide ring. People ask, why is the, the ring width different? There's only two different ring widths. If you're unsure what your bar is, take a tape measure and measure it. The bench press rings are 32 inches. If there's a wider ring on there, it's for Olympic lifters, it's for reference for snatch, and it's 36 inches. But standard is 32 to 32. Closed grip benching is generally when we're all the way here or here. So pretty much the thumb's on the smooth. Why would you do that? Well, if you want to work more tricep, a uh, little less pectoral. More, you want a slightly more tricep and chest dominant bench. And that would look like this, right? Medium grip is going to be, you know, usually anything inside the rings. Something like this, more balanced approach. Probably better for overall training. Most of you are going to get the best shoulder health and best overall stimulus with about a medium grip. Okay, and I have these J-hooks set a little low so that I can do the wide grip. Wide grip is when we go almost to the edge of the rings. This is the limit of meat legal for power lifting purposes. Okay, if you go wider than that, you're not meat legal. It's also very hard on your shoulders. But notice I, I've uh, had the J-hook slower so I can do this. Normally you don't want to lift it very far. I have them set to do that. The reason is you want the J-hooks as high up as you can get and still unrack the weight. Wide grip, way more chest dominant, shorter range of motion. Okay. Other thing we come to is notice where I put the bar on my chest. It's below the nipple line. Generally on a bench press, ideally when you unrack it, you want to be in pretty much a straight line up and down. You want your forearm at the bottom to pretty much be 90 degrees from the floor. And you want the elbows tucked in. So that means you're gonna to have to touch low on the chest. I'm at the base of my rib cage. But you stay below the nipple line. And the reason is that it's easier on the shoulder joints because when you come up here, internal rotation of the shoulder. This can damage your shoulders over time. Okay, so if you're down here low, come to the lower chest, drive up. Now, a lot of people say, well, how do we grip the bar? Well, you've got two options. You don't want it cocked back. You either need to grip it like a fist, punching like this, which may require some of you to use, use wrist straps, and this is the easiest way to go. Just get wrist straps if you have to so that you can be like this, like a fist, knuckles towards the air. Down, drive. Okay, another option is what's called bulldog grip, and I can't show it here, but effectively, it's like this. So it's your hand is gripping it at an angle. The weight is still distributed above the wrist, but it's something like this. Notice the elbows are popped out more. Turn the elbows in, drive. Also notice I drive the bar towards my feet. What you don't see me doing is this, okay? Drive straight up, which will be towards the feet. Other considerations, uh, where you set your J-hooks, where you're at. Notice I am all the way under the uprights. Why? Because when we unrack it, you want to minimize the travel. So when you bench press, when you come over, when you set up, and I'm a little low here, so let me go wider out. You don't want to have to travel more than an inch or two. You want to unrack the weight completely. You do not drop the weight down. When you unrack a bench press, you bring it to your lower chest. You take a deep breath, bring it straight down, press back up. You do not re-rack until you are fully locked out. If you cannot lock a lift, you do not try to rack it until it's locked. The reason, and also the reason I'm way under the 
the thing so that if it does come down, it's still going to catch my throat if I don't have safeties, but at least I'm not going to drop it in my mouth. What usually happens if you unrack and come down immediately before you get in position, or you try to re-rack it, the barbell comes down, and you're all the way out here, you usually drop the barbell in your mouth. Many guys have lost every tooth and broken their jaw by doing that. Don't do it. You need to unrack, let the weight settle over your lower chest, inhale, press. All right, pretty straightforward. So we covered the different foot stances, how to set up an arch, how to unrack, how to re-rack. Let me get back up here. Other thing, discuss other equipment you might use or need on the bench press. Wrist straps. Unless you have really thick wrists, and I don't, these will be mandatory as you get stronger. Um, they will help you in many, many ways to avoid inflammation in your wrist. It's not just a matter of being tough. What I can tell you is that when you start getting really strong and weights start to get real heavy, things that cause inflammation and make things hurt for days tend to take you longer to recover from. If it takes you longer to recover, you're gonna train less often, you're gonna gain less muscle, you're gonna gain less strength. Plus, you're suffering pain for no benefit. You guys will say dumb stuff like no pain, no gain. In this case, you're getting pain for no gain. Wrap your wrist up, get good ones. Right, these are Titan 30 inch wraps. I'm gonna put a wrap on, it's pretty straightforward, guys. Most of you will need wraps eventually. You know, they usually come with a thumb loop. You wrap the wrist up. You're tight, you're secure. You can get a better hold on that and keep that wrist straighter. Okay, it will give you better control, better power so that you can be more explosive at the weight under better control. Work your pecs and triceps more, the muscles you're trying to work without having to worry about your wrist so much. It'll save you a lot of trouble. Um, and no, I don't recommend wrapping anything but wrists. I don't wrap anything else. I don't wrap my knees, I don't wrap my elbows. Wrists are a different ball game and I use these to do max squats also for the same reason. Other things, belts. I bench with a belt, most serious lifters bench with a belt. Why? Well, watch what happens when you put the belt on. It increases neuromuscular efficiency. It lets you brace your abs against the belt. If you can brace your abs against the belt, you can get better neuromuscular efficiency. You might be able to bench five more pounds, or you might be able to take your eight rep max and do nine reps with it. Well, if you can do that, we get a better stimulus, right? We get a better stimulus. You have a belt, you come down, and watch what happens when I use the belt here. You can now brace your abs against that belt. You get tighter. Something to consider. So, the other thing that we need to look at when we get on the bench is to remember you have three points of contact. And I'll set this up again and watch my setup. The only thing that makes contact on the bench are the feet, your glutes and your traps. And when you get on the bench, oops, got the bar a little low. So when you come and set up, the only points that make contact, you got the feet, the glutes, you pull your scapula down and back. Okay, scapula are down and back. That means the traps are bunched up. Your traps, your glutes, and your feet are the only thing touching. You have three points of contact. And you press yourself away from the bar and you drive your traps into the bench. Okay? So, we covered here our options for footing. No matter what you do, they should be tight. You're doing a leg extension into the floor. You should not be able to move your feet from the time you unrack the bar till you re-rack the bar. Your glutes are tight on the ground. You have at least some arch in your back. Your scapula are pulled down and back. Your traps are in contact with the bench. Your spine does not touch the bench at all. 
So between your glutes and your traps, there should be no part of your body touching that bench and you'll let you happen to be really fat and it's drooping down. And that's going to happen for a lot of you. That's okay. But there should be no other muscle in contact with that bench. It should be your glutes and your traps. That's your three points of contact. We have different grip widths depending upon what you're trying to work. And as I've said, the widest grip, most people can usually, most people, I am not one of them. Uh, most people can move a heavier weight. They get more pectoral activation and it reduces the range of motion. But for also the majority of people, it is really, really hard on your shoulder joints. I recommend that if you're gonna do that, you only do maxes with it. And you do your volume work with a more medium grip. Uh, that would be my recommendation to most people. If you're trying to be a little more tricep and delt focused, you can bring it into a closer grip, but the mechanics overall stay the same. So I think that pretty much covers everything. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.